I would think that most of you that come to the channel are believers in aliens. I would love to know the numbers so go ahead and cast your vote in the poll above. We spend a lot of time arguing our point with those that are not so convinced in extraterrestrial life. We often point them to links with amazing videos of UFOs, quote historical events and some of us give examples of alien species said to be here or at least be visiting this little blue rock we call home. But sometimes the simplest question can reveal the truth or at least make you rethink some of your previous ideas. Don't get me wrong, I'm firmly in the believers camp but a great article I just read asked the simplest of questions with some great answers. The title sums up the idea. Why would aliens even bother visiting Earth? Welcome to IF, videos on history and mystery. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video again. This article was written by Lewis Dartnell and looks at the different reasons as to why or why not extraterrestrials would want to come to our world and it asks some great questions and gives some real good answers. Mr. Dartnell is an astrobiologist who has spent many an hour working away in his lab. He looks at extremophiles, creatures that live in the most inhospitable parts of our planet. This research is then used to theorize about life out in the furthest reaches of space. He does comment that he believes that the majority of life that is out there would be made up of these hardy microbial single cell organisms and is a skeptic when it comes to advanced alien civilizations. So if you're a believer that's all good, if you're not put that to one side for the moment and let's say there is at least one intergalactic advanced alien race out there. Why would, when they have the whole universe, they want to come to this piece of galactic real estate, especially when it's infested with a violent, dangerously technologically capable ape, humanity? One of the oldest theories, and one that has been adopted by many, with the legends of the Anunnaki, is for the very ape-like creatures I just mentioned, us. We could make a good slave race. We have enough intelligence to work complex machines, but still could be easily controlled. We could be put to work in the mines like the Anunnaki tales tell or in almost any other capacity. We could become the galactic equivalent of the dark days of African slavery here on earth. Our astrobiologist does, however, see a large flaw in the idea. As if the aliens were so advanced, robotics and AI would be available to them and surely it would be easier to create and control and manage a workforce of machines rather than dealing with us and our emotions. Well, how's about sex? Sex slavery is a continual problem here with just our species. Can you imagine if we throw an alien race into the mix? They could be of the mindset that it is a purely practical event, reproduction, to access our DNA, cross-breeding to gain something from our genetic makeup which they may lack. For this to happen on the most fundamental level, an alien race would need to be compatible with us, not just somewhat physically but also genetically. They would need not only the same polymer deoxyribonucleic acid as the storage molecule for their genetic information but also the same four letters for their genetic alphabet. They would also need to have the same coding system for translating sequences of genetic letters into proteins and the same organizational structure of DNA strands into chromosomes. This is one point where I feel he has missed the mark. Genetic engineering here on Earth is unlocking many secrets of gene editing, making cross-species DNA manipulation something we can now do almost easily. Our alien visitors, which we are hypothesizing are way in advance of us when it comes to other forms of technology, would also likely be just as advanced in genetic editing. Harvesting our genetic code would be easy and wouldn't need to be sexual. Many of alien abductees support this with their stories, reporting that the taking of biological samples occurs. Ok, so let's take this to an even more base level. Could we be an interstellar rest stop, somewhere for ET to stop, stretch their legs and grab a snack, that snack being us? The question our scientist asks is whether an alien's biochemistry would be capable of digesting us. He explains how our cells are made up of various organic molecules, proteins, polymers of amino acids, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA and membranes of phospholipids. We need to replace our genetic structure for our bodies to grow and repair themselves. We do this by taking in the basic building blocks from food sources such as animals and plants. 
our digestive system breaks them down into their component amino acids, sugars and fatty acids which we then use as our building blocks. An alien would need to be based on similar biochemistry and have the enzymes needed for processing the molecules we are built from to gain anything nutritionally from us. Also you would have to ask why us when there is so much other life for them to feed on. Humanity makes up 0.01% of all life on this planet there would be easier meals to be had. Ok so if it's not the food they are after how about a drink? We know that one thing we think of as a necessity for life to grow and that's water. Could water be the resource that they cover? There is a problem with this idea as well. He states that there are a lot of far better sources of water in space and that in fact current models think that earth first formed from a swirling disk of gas and dust around a proto sun and that young earth was a pretty dry place. The water to fill our oceans was delivered much later by a barrage of comets and asteroids coming from the colder outer regions of the solar system. Europa, a moon which orbits Jupiter contains more liquid in the global oceans beneath its frozen surface than our entire planet and it would be a far better source of good old H2O. This is when his ideas begin to cross over heavily with the ideas held by those that believe in ancient aliens. He asks if they could come in search of raw materials, metals and minerals that could be used to construct their technology or even elements which they give value to, similar to us with rare stones like diamonds. He says that this would be an irrational idea as it will once again be far easier to mine these elements in space, gathering them from asteroid fields and unpopulated planets. There are many places with much more of an abundance of these materials. After all this is why space mining is gathering a lot of attention on this planet. If we can get our hands on some of that loot from the solar system it could drive down the costs of much of our technology which often uses rare minerals for its circuits and batteries. Now we get to the simplest and possibly the most likely reason why they would come to earth. The first being they need a new home, their planet has become uninhabitable for one of the many possible reasons and now they have become refugees searching for a planet to begin again. Our planet is after all a very hospitable place for us, maybe it would also be suitable for ET. Various features of the earth beyond our warm oceans are thought to be crucial to maintaining a stable surface environment for large geological time periods. These include plate tectonics, regulating the climate, a large moon preventing the spin axis of the planet from wobbling too much and a global magnetic field for deflecting aside the solar winds and preventing the atmosphere being blown away into space. Earth is something of a rarity and could for these reasons be a target for our alien colonization. But yet again this is something that would not be a concern to an advanced alien race. They would have mastered all aspects of geoengineering and mega engineering and would most likely be able to build themselves out of any hole they had dug themselves into, this including building an artificial planet for them to call home. This planet could also double as a ship, flying around the universe gobbling up resources like a mega sized Pac-Man. So this brings us to the reason many believe and the simplest of all our reasons, they come to meet us. Dartnell says, to my mind then the enormous amounts of time and energy that are likely to be necessary for travel between the stars in a galaxy and the fact that raw materials can be sought elsewhere more practically would rule out aliens coming to the earth simply to take something we have. I think we can safely rest assured that even if intelligent alien species do exist in our galaxy they are not about to appear in our skies with an invasion fleet to subjugate humanity and begin stripping our world. Perhaps the thing that may attract extraterrestrials to earth is us. I suspect that if aliens did come to earth it would be as researchers, biologists, anthropologists, linguists keen to understand the peculiar workings of life on earth to meet humanity and none of our art, music, culture, languages, philosophies and religions. And this is where we agree. I think that that is what is happening and not only are they observing, they are also shaping our culture so one day we may become like them, a species capable of traveling the stars, learning, growing, free from the greed which consumes us now, the abundance of resources in space quenching our ever present thirst for more. Do you think we have been visited? Why did they visit 
and will we one day become like them, an advanced race capable of solving almost all problems, and like Star Trek, set off on a journey of discovery? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I thank you for being patient with me this week and I will try to make it up to you with a few longer videos as always. If you're new here and like what we do on the channel, hit that subscribe button. You can catch the latest on social media by searching We Are If. Thanks for watching, see you next time.